Thanks for coming back, you guys. We're just going to jump right back into our lecture on endangered species, and we're going to take a look at what happened to these woolly mammoth kind of guys here. And where did all of our megafauna go? We had dire wolves and saber-toothed tigers. That looks like a camel there. We had those. We had giant horses, giant sloths. Where did they go? And so we're going to take a look at the history of overexploitation. And the theory goes, uh, and it's a theory, but it's the best one we've got, that up here at the Bering Strait, about 14,000 years ago, it got really cold. So cold that the ocean started to freeze, and it brought the ocean levels down, and it made a land bridge here, right there. And that guy, and a bunch of his friends, these were the Paleo-Indians, they walked across and migrated throughout North America, and everywhere they went, you can follow their trails, you find a trail of bones, literally like fossilized bones that tell the story of, uh, of different megafauna going extinct. They were overhunted. And it didn't, didn't just happen here in the United States, it happened all over the world. Wherever people go, we tend to overexploit. Maybe it's something about, something in our DNA that makes us do this, but we go after the big game. Um, for different reasons. Uh, but at any rate, in some of these games, they, they just weren't ready for human predators. And so the humans didn't have guns, but they were pretty smart and they had their, their strategies and they had the, you know, the best tools they could. But like birds didn't, you know, some birds didn't know how to fly and things like that. So they just weren't quite ready for us. Um, and, and then we, we did not do a sustainable harvest in that case. So bringing this up to modern times, I want to give you guys a tool to remember causes of endangerment. It's called hippo. Hippos are not the cause of all these species going endangered. How could a cute little hippo like that be a cause of endangerment? Although I, I've been told hippos are one of the more feared animals in Africa, which is interesting. And also, uh, there's been very few megafauna that have gone extinct in Africa. Also interesting in, in recent times. Uh, but anyway, here we go. Hippo is just a little mnemonic or acronym to remember the five biggest causes, which are habitat destruction. When you hear endangerment, habitat destruction is your knee-jerk response. It's almost always involved as a, as a cause of animals going in or any creature going endangered. Invasive species, so invasives being in direct competition, uh, in most, a lot of times they win. Uh, pollution, which we'll get more into later, but that's uh, you know toxic, toxins going into the environment, and population pressure. Uh, just as people spread out, they kind of bring all this stuff with them, um, and come in direct contact, and then the animals uh, have to go away. So there's that piece, and then finally over exploitation, which we call poaching, which is just a name for illegal hunting. So that's a, that's a piece of it too, maybe a lesser piece. A lot of people are saying we need to bring in climate change. It might be too early for that, but I think they're right that we, we, can, um, we, we can be sure that as the climate changes and migration patterns are going to change and things like that, that'll definitely have an effect as well. And we'll have to spell a new word, um, maybe hypocrisy or something like that. Quick little story on the side. Could a single cat named Tibbles wipe out an entire species of bird? Folklore says yes. The real answer is almost. And so just a quick story. This is an island called Stevens Island. It's about just a little bit away from New Zealand. A guy named Stephen went to that island and he was the only one. He, his job was to run the lighthouse and he brought his cat named Tibbles to keep him company. And Tibbles went on a killing spree. And so no offense to any of you domestic cat owners and lovers out there, but if you own a cat, you probably realize that they still, uh, they still like to hunt. They haven't lost that instinct to hunt. They say the average house cat kills two songbirds a week uh, if they're allowed to go outside. And so and we've got 77 million cats in the United States. So already we're at 100, over 100 million birds a year, native birds. And so they are destructive. And when you get on an island, uh, a lot of times these birds, here's Stevens Wren, uh, who never evolved to fly. Same thing on Hawaii, same thing on lo lots of islands. You've got birds that never evolved flight. They've got wings, they just don't know how to use them because they've never had ground predators. And so you'd release a domestic cat there and they just go crazy. And so that's what happened to Stevens Island. Okay, moving forward. Uh, 
So now we're going to talk about what we can do, what laws are in place to prevent some of these species from, from going extinct. And so we've got the biggest law of all, the Endangered Species Act of 1973. This is one you want to remember. You can bust this one out on any time an exam, an AP exam is asking you about it, environmental legislation, Endangered Species Act will usually work. And so it essentially just says that uh, species that are in threat of going extinct are protected. Uh, so you can't directly harm them by hunting or capturing them and you've got to protect their habitat as well and so uh, I think most people at a glance can get behind that until all of a sudden you know so it's one thing if we're talking about polar bears or something like warm and fuzzy but what about that you know worm or protozoa or some bug nobody's ever really heard of and now all of a sudden that's stopping business as usual and it can get contentious um, and people people start losing jobs uh, a great example of that, uh, and not that this is not an unlovable creature, this is the northern spotted owl, uh, but it did in fact stop business as usual. So the northern spotted owl, this uh, big story happened in the 90s, it was, uh, I mean, it was, a, it was huge. Uh, so it lives in old growth redwood forest, which requires like, you know, we're talking about trees that are hundreds of years old, maybe thousands, and if it's not old growth virgin forest, this guy can't live there, and he's a top predator, or she. Uh, and so it's a really important and, and indicator species as well. So when that one's disappearing, it's a bad sign for the whole ecosystem. And it could almost be considered a keystone species as well. What was the threat? Well, it was uh, mainly habitat destruction. Basically, you've got the logging industry that is, you know, pe people love their redwood. It's uh, bug resistant, it's fire resistant, it grows straight, it's beautiful wood. Uh, and so you've got generations and generations of logging communities that are in Northern California and Southern Oregon and other places too, but that's where the redwoods are. Uh, and so you've got great grandfather was a logger, grandpa's a logger, dad's a logger, and by golly, his son's birthright is he's going to be a logger too. And so you've got a, a logging culture uh, there and community and they're at directly at odds with this endangered species. And so it was a hot story. Uh, people, you know, it was very political. Uh, it was uh, this, it was bought in the courtrooms. There were lots of protests. Movie stars were involved. People getting arrested. I've actually got friends that participated, uh, but these were not my friends. But just to show you another level of protests. I mean, people are very passionate about the environment and endangered species, and especially redwoods. I don't know if you guys know about Julia Butterfly. She went up into a big redwood and lived there for literally like a year and a half. She didn't come down. Look it up, Julia Butterfly. Um, these are the earth firsters. Once you are in a protest where everybody feels like they have to wear a mask, you want to start asking yourself if you, if you really want to be in that protest. These guys are hardcore. They will chain themselves to trees. They blow up uh, logging trucks. They blow up roads. Um, they're, they're direct action uh, to, to the next extreme. Uh, one thing that they would do is they put uh, spikes, metal spikes, into the redwoods so that when the loggers come, it doesn't hurt the tree, but when the loggers try to chop it down with a, a chainsaw and that chainsaw hits the metal spike, the chainsaw comes back and the, the logger can get really hurt. So there's, there's that piece of it too, which I don't endorse for the record. But, um, and then moving on, there's one last thing that you want to jot down, put a star by this too, it's called sites, sometimes it's called cities, also 1973, and this is an international agreement, uh, or a convention on international trade in endangered species, so an international agreement that we're not going to have uh, animals, which is fauna, and plants, which is flora, endangered go across uh, country boundaries so it, it can't leave the country and so uh, which is a good thing and so you got people that are still like into their exotic pets or they want those animal skins leopard skins or, or maybe they're into the medicinal thing you got crushed up tiger bone makes an aphrodisiac or or whatever it is and so these things are now illegal to be traded um, between countries. Does it still happen? Definitely. You know, there's a black market for these things. But, but really, the, the solution to this is, is having these uh, people that live in those places that are poaching those animals, having them have better economic opportunities. And so I think in, in the end, for, for endangered species, for whether it's U U.S. Or, or abroad, it's a combination of all these things. We've got to have more education, more economic opportunity, maybe, maybe ecotourism, and certainly there's got to be uh, some accountability and legal action for people that are, are causing these species to, to move towards extinction. And so we're going to wrap it up there. I hope you'll uh, take the time to do a summary at the bottom and summarize your notes, and I, and I hope that uh, you'll remember this and keep keep hippo and endangered species in your back pocket. That could, that'll come in handy later on. All right, thanks a lot, you guys. See you next time.